All right, welcome back to Digger Detecting, everybody. Today we're climbing, whoa, up the ladder. We are climbing. Uh, today we're climbing up the ladder up onto the shed roof, and the reason being is because we want to give you a bit of an update on what some of these bottles look like. If some will remember, about a year ago, we threw these bottles up here. They were pretty much clear, a pretty much see-through, majority of them. And, uh, well, as you can see, uh, they are starting to turn purple, a very, very nice purple, especially this one here, uh, the Nightingale Cedar Floor Polish. So this bottle here was pretty much uh, well it was pretty much clear you could just see a hint of purple in the base and in the neck of the bottle when we first put him up here and uh, well we're March 2024 now we put these bottles up here on February 2023 we've got the videos there top left corner uh, you can go forth and check out and basically be able to see uh, the start process of these bottles and what they look like and what we're going to do today though is get them down and we're going to explain that process a little bit further it's quite an interesting process it's a little bit understood still however it is quite interesting so what I've done is I've also printed out a little bit of a uh, well a little bit of a text that I'm going to read you uh, explaining that process a little bit further and how they were using uh, the manganese in the glass in the early type bottles so let's do it let's get them down and uh, let's get on the grass and let's uh, read that text show you a look many glass makers throughout the centuries have attempted to produce clear and colorless glass however Impurities such as iron oxide in the batch ingredients that were melted to make this glass often resulted in glass that was green instead of the desired water clear. An interesting characteristic of colourless glasses, which contains manganese dioxide as a decolourizer, is their tendency to turn different shades of purple when exposed to the rays of the sun or to other ultraviolet sources. It is a photochemical phenomenon that is not yet perfectly understood. However, it is generally accepted that the ultraviolet light initiates an electron exchange between the manganese and the iron ions. This changes the manganese compound into a form that causes the glass to turn purple. It was in the mid 19th century that manganese dioxide, popularly called glassmaker's soap, began to be used by American glass manufacturers as a decolorizer. By including a small amount of this ingredient in the melt, they could produce glass that appeared virtually colorless. An 1899 publication by Benjamin Beiser remarked, the especial use of manganese in glass is to mask or neutralize the greenish color imparted to the glass by the protoxide of ion. Manganese imparts to glass a pink or red tint, which being complementary to green, neutralizes the color and permits the glass to transmit white light. Others though refuted this theory and claimed that the green tint of ion was not neutralized by the pink of manganese and thus subduing it, but by the ion taking another charge of oxygen from the manganese and becoming peroxide of iron and producing a reddish yellow tint while the protoxide produces a green tint. Glass scientists today generally agree, explaining that an ion exchange between the iron and the manganese molecules changes the observed color of the glass. This process is sometimes reversible by also gently heating the glass to about 200 degrees Celsius. In the early 20th century, changes in manufacturing processes as well as more pure batch materials dictated different ways to decolorize glass and the use of manganese oxide for this purpose later dwindled. Oh, there you have it, guys. I really hope you found that interesting. This is our third video we've done on the bottles turning purple now. And look, I've found it interesting myself. I've enjoyed the process and I've enjoyed it getting up there on the shed once a month and turning the bottles around, basically exposing that different side to the sunlight and watching them turn purple. So as you've seen, we've got some really pretty bottles. And to be honest, well, I think I'm going to throw them all back up there for a little bit longer, especially these ones off to the right-hand side. And they really need a lot further, uh, well, a lot further exposure from that UV sunlight. But look, some of these bottles here are absolutely gorgeous now, a beautiful purple color. And look, uh, look, some people don't want to do this. They want to keep them the clear type. These are for my collection and I wanted to turn them purple and that's why we've done it. So it's not going to suit everybody, but it suited me. And I really hope you enjoyed the process so far. So we're going to come back in look six months or a year from now, show you again what they all look like. But for now, they're going back on the roof. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you on the next.